Now this is going to be a long video, so let's get started. This next little bit is pretty important. We're going to assign our server a static IP address. Now most tutorials on the internet won't tell you to do this, but you want to assign your server a static IP simply because the IP address will never change if we make it static. I'll explain this later and you'll see why. So let's start and go to uh, our command prompt. We're going to type ipconfig space forward slash all. Sorry, forward space all. There it's going to give us our IP address, our subnet mask, our DNS server, our gateway server. Gateway and DNS are almost always on a home network going to be the same IP address. Then we're going to want to put this into our network adapter so that it becomes static. To do that we're going to press uh, start and then settings, network and internet, ethernet, change adapter settings, I'm sorry, go back, change adapter settings, right click on our network adapter and properties. In there you're going to look for the TCP IVP4 and you'll see all of your IP information. You're going to want to fill in the IP address, the subnet mask, the default gateway, the preferred DNS server with all the information we have in our command window. We do this so that once we save this the IP address will never change. So we'll always be able to connect to the server on the same IP until we make it different. Once you do this, you're going to get it all typed in there. Once you do this, go ahead and tell it OK close all the other windows out and it's saved. Then we have a static IP. This will be important and you'll see why once we get log our game installed and get logged in remotely to our game. Alright, so tell it OK. And you can close out all the other windows. Alright, once those are closed, we're going to go into our file explorer and we're going to the root of C and we're going to create a directory there, folder, and we're going to call it dead server. Now you can name it anything you like. Inside dead server, we're going to create a couple of other directories or folders. One of them being uh, steamcmd. And the other is going to be our 7 days to die server directory. And I just abbreviated as 7 days to die. Now we're going to go to the link in the description and we're going to download this Steam CMD executable. And the pages that we're using are great guides to use. They have a lot of commands that we're going to use here in a few minutes, so we're going to reference them again. We're going to extract the zip file that it downloaded. And then we're going to copy the steamcmd.exe out of that folder and put it in the steamcmd folder we created in our dead server. Now next, what we're going to want to do is we want the path to our 7 days to die folder. So we're just going to highlight that and copy it. And paste it in notepad so that we can reference it in a second. Now we're going to go back into our Steam CMD directory and we're going to run the Steam C Steam CMD command. Sorry, got tongue twisted.
This only takes a few minutes to load and it's downloading all the Steam command uh, executables and binaries. Now it leaves you at a Steam prompt. Here we're going to log in anonymously. We're going to reference back to the page we were just on and you'll see the commands there in order to log into Steam. So find the Windows directory uh, login down below the Linux one So the command is login anonymous. And it'll log us in anonymously because you don't need your Steam ID in order to download this application. And we're going to give it the force install path, which is going to be our seven days to die path that we copied. and press enter. You won't see any reaction but all you've set is the variable to say I want everything installed there. The Steam ID, I'm sorry, I forgot to record the Steam ID so we're going to go to the other link in the description, the other development page and get the Steam ID for seven days to die. Again, both of these pages I would recommend bookmarking and if you're going to do this very often you will refer to these uh, quite often. So in there you'll see the commands that we're trying to run as well. Uh, get the app ID for seven days to die and we'll copy that into our command window and it starts running. Now this one does take a long time to do. Alright, with that said, we're going to go and we're going to talk about port forwarding. We're going to get into our firewall in just a second. But I want to talk about some things that nobody else tells you how to do because your firewall is different than mine. Well, to me, that's kind of like saying, I can't teach you to drive because the car you're going to drive is different from mine. All the concepts are the same. A lot of the menus are very similar. Yes, they're not all the same. But that doesn't mean I'm going to neglect teaching you the concept of how to do port forwarding. So let's dive into this big dark secret that nobody ever tells you about on the internet. We're going to get into our firewall and we're going to do port forwarding. All right, once we're logged into our uh, router, sorry, we're going to look for firewall and we're going to look for our firewall settings. And you'll see under my firewall, there, there's a whole list of settings here. We're going to look for port forwarding. And you'll see I already have one rule already set in here. I want to make a quick comparison here. You'll see it says device. Look at the top of the menu here. It says select a device. That will always be either the name or the IP address of our server. Uh, you can manually add the IP address if it's not listed there. Now some of these may be different on your router. Uh, public IP address you do not have to worry about. Your router already knows what its public IP address is and you'll see that I've got mine blanked out. Select application in the, is the next drop down and you see I have it set to custom and if you look down in my rule that I already have created you'll say it says service. Well service and application are synonymous with each other. So when it says so select an application up here it, it's the same as telling it what service you want. I custom name these so I can identify which game they're associated with and I highly recommend you do the same. So we want to set another, and because of the refresh, the way this particular router refreshes every time I type something, it, it looks wonky. So I want to do a TCP port 
and you'll see I use 38080. So if I was to manage this outside of my home network, I would try to connect on my public IP address with that port. Now, in the description I have all these ports and settings and you can make the settings according to the way you need them set up. If you do not plan to manage your server outside of your network, you do not need to put in the 8080 or where I have 3080. You do not need to put that rule in there because it's already inherent to be able to be managed internally. Now, the first rule I had in here was our TCP UDP port. That one you do have to have if you want friends from outside your network to be able to log into your server and play with you. You will have to give them your public IP address. Now, the other uh, UDP uh, ports are needed for the game to communicate on the network. So the only one that you don't have to have is the external management ports. And once this tutorial is over, I am going to remove that because I don't manage it outside my network. Now, why people don't show you this, I don't know. But I would be doing you a disservice to not show you. So we've added that our last rule. If you look in the description, that's everything that we need to run and manage this service. And manage this service. All right, we're going to go back to our dedicated server and go into our dead server folder, seven days to die. And what we're going to do is we want to create a desktop shortcut to start our seven days to die server. So we're going to send start dedicated dot bat to our desktop. And then we're going to change the name of it and change the icon for it. And it's something you don't have to do if you don't want to, but I don't want to have to keep digging in order to every time I want to start my server. So let's change the name. And then we'll change the icon. Properties, change icon, and we're going to tell it to browse and it takes us right to our seven days to die folder and there's our icon. So next we're going to open up the developer page and our server config XML file and we're going to set them side by side because there are some things to note here that you do need to know. Now why other people don't tell you about this on the internet? Now there's a lot of written information but you won't find it in anybody else's video. So we're going to edit that in Notepad++ and I've put a link to Notepad++ download in the description. And the reason I use it is because it is specifically a developer Notepad and it puts it in hum human readable format where Notepad just makes it look like a bunch of chicken scratch. On the develop page all of the server settings are explained. Uh, the sections may not match up identical but it, it's all there. So if you look through uh, change settings that you want, there are some things to note. You do have to give it a server name and it can be whatever you want because it's just a text field. You do have to set a server password. That is a requirement. You'll see our ports here for external connection so our friends can play with us. And there is a range of ports we can use because if you have multiple games you may want to change the ports for each game. Also you'll see that um, the other port, our 8080 port, there it is. So you'll see our 8080 port is already built into the server. So internally you don't need to put that firewall rule in for external management. You can internally manage it natively. And what else? There was something else I wanted to show you. Oh, speed. Um, I do maximize the speed and this explains, hey, it's only going to go this fast. So I put that at the maximum um, just because it helps prevent lag and seems to operate better. 
Uh, the default is 512, but what the heck. Let's see what else. Navis game for our game world. That will change when we start loading mods and other maps. This is a, a pretty detailed uh, setup. So here's the important thing. Game name. You cannot use spaces or special characters in your game name. You can use dashes and underscores. If you name it something with spaces, it will not load the game and you will not understand why without having to search in the logs for invalid game name error. Um, I think that's about it of the important stuff. You, you can read through all of this and get it all. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. How hard you want the game, how easy you want the game, all of those things can be set here. We're going to start our server that we've worked so hard to configure. We're going to click our icon. It gives us a little command window and says we can press any key to continue. Then it takes a few seconds. It's going to give us another window and we're going to verify with Task Manager that everything is running. So there's our command window. Let's check Task Manager. And then we see that it's running. Sometimes, depending on your machine, it may take several seconds for this process to start. But once it starts and we get past here, it's loading, deciding what graphics it's going to load. Once it gets past this part, we're going to go back onto our desktop machine and we're going to check our server from there. On our local machine, we are going to go to the IAP address of our dedicated server with a colon 8080, because remember in our server config, that's what we told it our management port was. And again, this is internally, not externally. So we're going to log in here with our proper password. No, I, I thought I said proper password. Right. So once we log in, you'll see that it gives us a command window similar to the one that's running on the server. This is a very down and dirty control panel. There's a hundred of them on the internet you can find if you want to try using a different one. And this just simply gives us the option to shut down the server once we've finished playing or all our friends have logged out. All right, from here, we're going to go ahead and start our game as normal. We're going to join a game. We're going to select the LAN game option select our server, connect to the server, put in our server password, and we are off killing zombies. And that's it for today. I hope you found this educational. I want to thank you for being here. If you have issues or questions, please contact me at Lou the Pict on Discord or at Lou the Pict on social media. Please smash those like and subscribe buttons and share this video with a friend if you know somebody who needs it. I'm Lou. This is Crack Mods and Gaming. Wishing you happy gaming.